Today is the day before Beth's first rifle Colorado elk tag. So she's got a bull tag. We've been waiting for this hunt for a long, long time, especially you. She burned roughly around 12 or 14 points, something like that, a lot. And uh, we're hoping to see something tonight that we want to go after. We're looking at this valley way behind us. Is he right? way back over there <laughs> so we'll check this out and then see uh hopefully we'll spot something mm -hmm. we got my nephew ryan my buddy tj and kurt's coming up tomorrow and we're going to kind of all spread out and try to locate something that uh is worthy of going after so super excited ready to go see what happens Alright guys, welcome to Elk Camp. I just got here. It's a little windy, starting to rain. But uh evidently we're not enough for this camp. Let's go take a look. Ah, the man TJ, he's guiding this trip. Well, second guide. Third guide. Third guide. Third guide of this trip. Let's go take a look. This is like uh House, the, this is Steve's crib in here. Take a look at uh -huh. this marble countertop. Okay, this is the hunting version of cribs. And the tag holder here. Yay. Yeah. Got Ryan sleeping. <laughs> Hiding his face. Uh -huh. Okay, opening morning. Best elk tag. Um, so we left camp and I realized that I didn't have my boots. I still have my camper slippers on, so I had to flip around and go back. So we're running a little bit late. So um, we are now on the road, getting ready to turn into our spot and get up to our perch and see what we can come up with. So stick around. super windy <clears throat> we had a cow a calf and a small bull catch us by surprise right at first light then we had about three cows and a calf come up the hillside from us we heard some shooting down on the private ranch below us so I think they shot something and with the wind the way it is just kind of I don't know it's a weird morning because it's real windy and they're just not out in the fields and they're not moving how they usually move the last couple days so a little barometric pressure change and wind they're doing their own thing There's a, little there's a bull chasing that cow and calf. There's two spikes and then a little bull and then two a cow calf. That's a, yeah, five point. There's two people and they're already on their feet. That's not a good sign. One, two, three, four, like five, six. There's a six. Six. Where do you see that one? You see this guy? No. Is that the front one? Yeah, he was kind of further up front. Oh yeah, he's... 
think the camera's better than my binoculars. Oh, yeah. This is my spotting scope. You usually do? Yeah, so I go down. There's the hay fields. I can see. Kind of down in that ravine where they'll graze at night. And then in the mornings, they'll come up through this little valley and up into the mountain BLM land. And this morning, um, we expected them to come back down, but only... Um, I mean, back up, but it doesn't seem like they went back down last night, so cross our fingers they go down tonight. spot than an evening spot that's for sure i can see that because they're moving off those hay fields in the morning yeah. evenings I, my experience all the animals have always kind of moved slow in the evenings kind of do, 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 you know see i like i like to find animals like from the morning i like to find them and bed them mm -hmm. and then put a plan to move in and then when they stand up knock them down yeah that's, that's what true. i like to do. yeah very hard in this unit this is a unit that like well, I mean, it's not hard because you just gotta find it. And we, we do find a lot of them. Thank you. So, we're gonna have Brats, baby. Brats tonight. Homegrown Brats, so you're, your cow? One of our pigs. Okay. Your pig. Yep. I Pork fucked brush. her, but she got mean. She got mean and bitter, so she did. it ended up in the crock pot. Wait, wait, she was like weenling. this big when we got her. She's a little run. And, uh, I think everybody, this is day number three, I think everybody's kind of starting to get a little bit, uh, it's getting a little bit monotonous. Hopefully we can break that monotony today. But we had the good old single folders to keep us going this morning. We're going to go in. It's it's a pretty short hunt in the morning because they're coming from some private hay fields down below and they're bedding up above us in these canyons. So. <clears throat> There's a section they come through us, so we're going to get there and set up and knock on wood. We've had pretty good luck with seeing elk every day in the mornings and evenings. Um, hopefully today's the day we'll see one that comes through that we're able to connect on and it's a good bull. But, you know, we'll see. We'll keep grinding and see what happens. Um, but like you say, we need to break the monotony because this getting up. This is day number four, getting up early, and uh, it starts to wear on you. But, you know, thankfully we were able to get the uh, Taj Mahal <laughs> into this particular place, so it's a little bit uh, more luxurious and more comfy. So we'll get up there this morning and see what happens, and uh, if that doesn't happen for us this morning, we're probably going to break off and start looking at some other stuff and get into some of these pockets these don't get pushed into. So. Keep grinding. Elk camp day three. It's okay. Day threes are lucky. Best gonna get a big bull down this morning. I can feel it. I don't want to jinx it, but I can feel it. 350 plus coming nice. down this morning. <laughs> I, I like it. There he is, there he is. Whistle. Take that shot, that's a good shot. Hit. 
Yeah. There he is right there. Right Hit him again. Right there. Right, no, no. One more step. He's right behind that tree. Yep. Nope. He's wobbling. He's wobbling. He's wobbling. He's wobbling. put another one in him, Cow's behind him. We got cows. It's okay. He's about to step out. Not yet. He's on ahead, right out in that open. So like we're saying, this is the worst part. Um, did not drop, did not go down, did not see him go down. So now we're just questioning, was it a good hit? I think it was better than what we thought. And like Steve was saying, it's either a good hit and he's dead right over that hill or it's in the muscle and he'll live and continue to be an elk for many years. So, In all my experience, it's either a liver shot, a good liver shot because of the way he was angling or it was more of a muscle shot and he's fine. He went from... He went four over 400 yards, trailing behind the cows. This makes me think that it's a liver shot. And he's just, you know, running around adrenaline right now. So we're going to give him some time, and then we'll go where we last saw him and see if we can find some blood. To figure out about where he was, I think he was right here. When she hit him, I was just trying to read the, the brush to see how high the blood was on the brush so we can get an idea maybe about where he was hit. And it's it's about this high over there, but then it peters out going this way from where she shot. Hmm. Once, well, you could probably tell going that way better because okay. there's a steady stream going all the way up there. Is there? And it, usually, it takes a little smell bit. Smell good? Just, smell fine? It, yeah, yeah, it smells fine. It doesn't smell yeah. like gut. Yeah. And it doesn't smell like heavy iron. It's not dark blood like it's liver. So I don't know. Uh, whatever opening he was shot at, he was standing towards the bottom of the opening. So maybe back towards there, or back over here. Uh -huh. He's definitely shot in this opening. So. Yeah. I think so too. Yeah, because then, then he comes up through there's here. Fresh, and there's fresh poo there, and you're in the night. Some blood. We think the shot might be a little back. So we're on back out of here. Give them a few more hours and uh, come back here later about noon. Jump back on the trail and see if we can't find him. So a little bit of luck. He's just within those cedars bedded down and it will expire. Or on the other side, it's a shot through the muscle and he lives on. So back. Hopefully he just went into that cover and laid down. So we'll play it by ear, but emotions are definitely up and down right now. As you can see, the emotions are kind of at lows right now. But we'll be alright. That's hunting. That's hunting. 
is many, many times I've lost animals because uh, of various amount of reasons, but yeah, and it's, it's gut wrenching. You don't want to hurt an animal, but you know, they're tough. And I've seen animals come back from broadheads in their shoulders to, you know, what you thought was a lethal hit and next day you see him in the field so seriously down in the dumps right now we got a hold of the uh, leasey of the property it said that the owners have a no recovery policy so you can take that for what it's worth it's super sad because I believe that that bull is within a couple hundred yards of the fence but unfortunately they absolutely would not let us go in and even look and uh, you know call it unethical call it inhumane call it whatever you want it's just it's sad it's too bad that this this day and age has come to that but it is what it is so huh, whatever it's part of hunting you know and uh, it's too bad either people in the prior to us have ruined that or these guys that really run the place now where the elk is on really just don't care about the animal and the people and the feelings and everything it took to get the tag and so whatever just take it for what it's worth all right so the saga continues on Beth's bull uh, about the game warden's about to pull up and we'll talk to him see if we or he can go in and retrieve it so that would be great if we can get in there and retrieve that bull We'll see what happens. Yeah. Um, you want to drive up to where we cut in? We just drive straight there, and then we can walk that fence side right to where we go. Yeah, that's fine. Quick update is we got permission to go onto private land by the owner now that we're accompanied by a game warden. And um, Steve and the warden is in. I've been in there for what? An hour? Yeah, it's been a while. For about an hour. So we're getting a little nervous out here. We're getting a little nervous. Ryan, you nervous? Mm hmm. <laughs> mm hmm. Sucks. We gotta work on your like catchphrase, like "sick of bro." Sick of bro. <laughs> Up to the road, see if we can see him. Well, we went a long way, and finally the, the, the blood just petered out. Let I me mean, just spec. Right, so, okay. so we were talking about Zach and I. And we think maybe a back hip, a muscle shot. Because he, he didn't stop. Never laid down, never bedded. He just stayed with those cows. Where those cow tracks went on that, that trail, he just stayed there with them. So we just got back. Um, we were able to get a hold of the local law as far as the game warden. He was able to get a hold of the owner, and since he was with us and did the investigation on seeing the blood trail going over into private, she was able to give us permission. So him and I went in and we searched for almost two and a half hours and we completely lost blood. So, and then I got his professional opinion on the blood itself and he felt that it was probably more of a muscle than an internal organ, like a liver blood. So that makes us feel a little bit better. And uh, you know, it's, it's part of hunting. It's been a fantastic hunt all the way around. Good friends, good family. We appreciate you guys following along with us, watching us, taking the time out of your day to spend with us. And uh, hopefully you learned a little something because it's always educational for us. And hopefully you learned a little something because we definitely did. We always do on every hunt. And, um, you know, Godspeed and God bless. Take care. Thanks for watching the Western Obsession. Thank mm -hmm. you.